Greetings and welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, dwarves, elves, hobbits, wizards, and balrogs. I've been absent the past few days because, well, I've been quite busy. And today I finally have managed some time, well, to take the time to record this video, and I've found this really cool integral. It's a double integral from zero to infinity of dx dy divided by 1 plus e to the x times e to the x plus e to the y times 1 plus e to the y. So yeah, that is one hell of a structure. This integral is from the Romanian Mathematical Magazine and it was designed by Mr. Ankush Kumar Parja. I hope I did not butcher his name. So he has a habit of designing very cool double integrals using properties of symmetry of the integrands involved. Whatever that means, I'm talking about, you know, solving double integrals using symmetry, which is something I quite enjoy as well. So the solution development for me would start with an expansion using e to the negative x. That would be quite useful for the substitutions I'm going to invoke later. So we're going to start by writing this as the double integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x dx dy divided by 1 plus e to the negative x now times e to the x plus e to the y times 1 plus e to the y. And I'd like to convert this thing into a 1 plus e to the negative y and for that I'll expand using e to the negative y. So we have double integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times e to the negative y dx dy divided by 1 plus e to the negative x times 1 plus e to the negative y. And we still have this e to the x plus e to the y term. And now the substitution here seems quite logical. We could just let e to the negative x equal u and e to the negative y equal s. This implies that negative e to the negative x dx equals du and negative e to the negative y dy equals ds. And what about the limits of integration? Well, as x tends to 0, we have u tending to 1, and as x tends to infinity, we have u approaching 0, and pretty much the same limits for the s variable as well. So this implies that the target integral i is now the double integral from 1 to 0 of negative e to the negative x turns into, wait, we have now the differential element being negative du. We also have a negative ds, and we're dividing the whole thing by 1 plus u, and we also have 1 plus s. Then we have e to the x would be 1 by u, so we have 1 by u plus 1 by s. And the two negatives cancel out, and if we switch up the order of the limits of both u and s, we get two negative signs that, again, cancel out quite conveniently. So we now have a double integral from 0 to 1 of du ds, duds, if you may, divided by 1 plus u times 1 plus s times u plus s divided by us. So we'll write this as us, as in we have the United States duds up top could that be the name of some mathematics mathematics based rock band i'm not sure i think there are far better names for a mathematics rock band now to think of it comment down below exactly what should be the name of such a mathematical rock mathematics based rock band so we have u plus s down here okay cool now just for further convenience, because we can rename the dummy variable to anything we like, I'd like to rename them back to x and y. So just for the heck of it, we have the double integral from 0 to 1 of xy dx dy divided by 1 plus x times x plus y times 1 plus y. Okay, cool. So as the name of a rock band, what about negative 112? I think that's pretty cool. I mean, it's iconic. For the memes, at least. Anyway, we have this new transformed integral. But how do we proceed from here? Well, we could cancel out either a 1 plus y or a 1 plus x term if I expand using 0. So how exactly am I going to do that? We have double integral 0 to 1 
of x times y plus 0. And the very special version of 0 I want to use here is plus 1 minus 1. That's very nice, nice and simple, convenient. And it does something very cool. Because once we distribute the multiplication and then we use the linearity of the double integral operator, we have the double integral from 0 to 1 of x times y plus 1 divided by 1 plus x times x plus y times 1 plus y dx dy minus the double integral from 0 to 1 of x dx dy divided by 1 plus x times 1 plus y times x plus y. Okay, cool. So we have some nice cancellation taking place. And I'm going to call this integral here i sub 1 and this one i sub 2. Now for the integral i sub 1, we're going to adopt the corny Irish accent. The Irish accent itself is not corny. I'm just trying my best not to butcher it. All due respect to the Irish community watching this video. They sound more Irish than Scottish or Scottish than Irish. I don't even know. I'm not even going to try anymore. I think that's enough. Sorry about that. I just watched a renaissance periodization video where Dr. Mike Isratel was dissecting Conor McGregor's training and I think he did the Irish accent a lot better than me. Anyway, so what do we plan to do for the integral i sub 1? Well, the first thing we'd like to do is switch up the order of the operators here. So we have the double integral from 0 to 1 of x divided by 1 plus x times x plus y dy dx so that means all of the functions independent of y can be taken outside the first integration operator we have integral 0 to 1 x divided by 1 plus x times integral 0 to 1 of 1 by x plus y dy and we have the outer integration with respect to x so this sorts out to integral 0 to 1 x divide by 1 plus x log x plus y limits being 0 and 1 dx sorting out the limits we have integral 0 to 1 x divided by 1 plus x times log x plus 1 minus log x dx and of course now distributing the multiplication and then using the linearity of the integration operator we have integral 0 to 1 x times log x plus 1 divided by 1 plus x dx minus integral 0 to 1 x times log x divided by 1 plus x dx. And these are two pretty standard integrals. For the first one here, we'll expand x as x plus 1 minus 1. So that way we get integral 0 to 1 of x plus 1 times log x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. There's some nice cancellation taking place. We're left with only integral log x plus 1 dx minus integral 0 to 1 of log x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 dx minus this other integral from 0 to 1 x log x divided by terribly sorry about that 1 plus x dx this thing here can be solved using integration by parts so we'll integrate 1 and using Dr. Payam's trick for integration by parts, instead of integrating one to and integrating one into x, we'll actually use x plus one because x plus one is an antiderivative of x as well. So we have x plus one times log x plus one limits zero and one. And the perk of this is that now we have x plus one times the derivative of log x plus one, which is one by x plus one some lovely cancellation taking place meaning that we just have one left minus the integral here is just solved using the power rule so we have log square x plus one divided by two again limits being zero and one minus this other integral here zero to one log x divided by one plus x dx that i'll get to in a bit so let me just sort out the limits here First, as x approaches 1, we have 2 times log 2 minus log 1 would be 0. We're, we're rid of that. Minus 1 minus, uh, we're going to be left with 1 half log square 2. And now we turn our attention to this integral from 0 to 1 of 
x times log x divided by 1 plus x dx, which is, again, pretty standard. I'm just going to single this one out. Integral 0 to 1. x times log x times 1 plus x. And we know we can expand 1 plus x as the geometric series because here we have the absolute value of x being less than 1 on our interval of integration. So we have integral 0 to 1. x times log x times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k, k being a non-negative integer. We take this inside the summation operator. We have integral 0 to 1, sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k plus 1 times log x dx. Switching up the operators, we now have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k and we have this integral from 0 to 1 of x times x to the k plus 1 times log x dx, which can be solved quite easily using integration by parts. Very quickly, we have the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times... What exactly do we have? We have x to the k plus 1... Wait a minute. Uh, oh yeah, we're differentiating the log x term, so we have x to the k plus 2 divided by k plus 2, again terribly sorry about that, k plus 2, times log x, limits being 0 and 1. You can very easily verify that this thing collapses to 0. Minus 1 over k plus 2 times the integral from 0 to 1. Differentiating log x gives us 1 by x, and we have x to the k plus 2, so that simplifies out to x to the k plus 2. 2 again. No, wait, k plus 1. Sorry, I'm forgetting math in my haste. So this is what we have. And we're not done yet. We have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times we have negative k plus 2 squared because of the integration. And we have x to the k plus 2, with the limits being 0 and 1. And as x approaches 0, the entire thing collapses anyway. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1, as I'm absorbing this negative 1 into the negative 1 to the k. And then we have k plus 2 in the denominator. This is looking good so far. Let's now adjust the index variable k so that it starts at 1 instead of 0. And that means we have the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1 squared, if I'm not wrong. No, I am not wrong at all. In fact, let's just start it at k equals 2. So we have the sum over k. Oh, we have negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k squared. This is quite convenient. So this is basically, if I would include in it a term of 1, as in, again, expand by 0, so that would give me the sum over the non-negative integers, rather the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k squared, because this thing is just, well, negative 1 to the 0 divided by 1 squared minus 1. So this thing here being pi squared by, by 12, the Dirichlet 8 function at 2 minus 1. That's the result of our integral. That's the result of the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log x divided by 1 plus x squared. Okay, cool. And now to refer back to our integral, i sub 1, I recall. So the integral i sub 1 is just all of this stuff minus the integral we just sorted out to being pi squared by 12 minus 1. Okay, cool. So that means the two negative ones cancel out quite nicely, and we're left with i sub 1 being 2 log 2 minus 1 half of log squared 2 minus pi squared by 12. Now, what about the integral i sub 2? As I recall, i sub 2 is the double integral from 0 to 1 of x dx dy divided by 1 plus x times x plus y 
times 1 plus y. And this is actually a lot easier than i sub 1. The reason for that is symmetry. Like I said, I really love invoking symmetry. Notice that if we replace x with y and y by x, I mean to say we're renaming the dummy variables to each other, we have the double integral from 0 to 1 of y dy dx divided by 1 plus x times x plus y times 1 plus y. And of course, using Fubini's theorem, since we have a continuous function of both x and y on the interval 0 to 1 squared, we can switch up the order of the integration operators here. So again, we have dx dy. So that means adding up these two versions of the same integral i sub 2 gives us 2 times i sub 2 equal to the double integral from 0 to 1 of x plus y times dx dy divided by 1 plus x times x plus y, terribly sorry about that, times 1 plus y, these two cancel out, and now we have a function of x times a function of y, which makes our lives much easier, because that just means we have to multiply the results of two single integrals that look exactly alike. And in both cases, we're going to get log 2. So that means we have log squared 2. So that's 2 times i sub 2, or i sub 2, that is, equals 1 half of log squared 2. Now, recall the target integral i was actually i sub 1 minus i sub 2. And i sub 2 already had a negative 1 half log squared 2 in it. So that means we have 1 whole log squared 2 now. So this implies that the target integral i equals 2 times log 2 minus pi squared by 12 minus log squared 2. And again, we have log squared 2. That does pop up quite a bit, doesn't it? It's not exactly the name of some famous constant because, well, you don't need it to be a famous constant. It's just, it's just log 2 for crying out loud. But anyway, I quite enjoyed the solution development there. And I hope you enjoyed the video as well. Be sure to like and subscribe, share the video as well to help the channel grow. Do drop me a follow on Instagram in case you like the channel and the effort and the effort I'm putting out. You can support me on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.